Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show for our very special episode live at Theater 68 in North Hollywood for our very special episode where we're interviewing two very special guests. These gentlemen um, have been in Hollywood for many, many years doing some very, very big things, and we are at the premiere um, of the play. This play that, ladies and gentlemen, is one that is not only about autism, but it also has a very, very um, heartfelt uh, message to it that has been buzzing all across uh, North Hollywood as well as California. And this play, ladies and gentlemen, is one that these gentlemen have put their heart and soul into it, and you don't want to miss it because it is tonight here um, at Theater 68. And the play that we're going to be talking about is uh, Self Injurious Behavior. Now, let me make sure I pronounce this right. This is Self Injurious Behavior. Uh, we're going to find out what it's about. The cause is quite meaningful, and we're going to be speaking to these gentlemen here that's right here. We have a, a, a guy that I didn't even know, ladies and gentlemen. This man was born in Brooklyn, New York. He's been doing some big things for many, many years, and he's also um, starred in one of my favorite movies all the way back from the 80s, and we're going to be talking to him about that. Mr. Ronnie Marmo is stopped by the Sherrod Show. How are you, sir? Good. Nice to see you. You doing you. okay? Yeah, man. And, and, and I was just talking to him just a moment ago. He looks like he's like a pitcher from the Atlanta Braves. I guess uh, <laughs> that's ago. the first time I've gotten a uh, pitcher from the Braves. Yeah, he looks like he's a pitcher from the Braves. Why not? And then um, this gentleman, um, to your right, he needs no introduction. Uh, he's currently stars um, on Criminal Minds. Um, he's been in so many movies and films. I grew up while watching him, and my wife as well absolutely loves his uh, his work. And he stopped by the Sherrod Show. I'm so privileged to have him here. And he's also a huge Cubs fan, ladies and gentlemen, Cubs. because he was born and raised in Chicago. Um, give it up for Joe. Joe, welcome to the show. And let me make sure I get your name right. Joe. Montagna. Beautiful Italian name, Montagna. gentlemen. Welcome to the Sherrod Show. How are you all doing today? Sure. Great. You doing okay? Great. Now tell us a little bit about, let's start first with the play. Uh, tell us a little bit, Joe, about the play and what was the inspiration behind well, self-injurious behavior was brought to, actually, Ronnie was the one who kind of discovered it first. These, these people out of Texas. And I, and I have a daughter with autism, so, so when he brought that up to me, he said, look, I saw this play in New York. I think it's something we should get involved with, produce, come out here, Ronnie's Theater, Theater 68. We had been working on our play, um, Bloody Bruce play, that, we, that we've been doing in New York and in, the, in, in Los Angeles for a while. And so, um, so I said, hey, Ronnie, if you think it's, it's, it's something worthwhile, I'm in. So then, of course, when I saw a production of it, I realized, yeah, it's, it, was, it, was a, it was an important piece, not just for the autism community, but just for, for, for everyone, especially because it brings an awareness of, of what, what that is like. It's written by a woman. It's basically her story of her experience of having a, a child with autism, her son. And, uh, and that's basically it. But Ronnie was really the catalyst that kind of got it going. Yeah, I, I'm excited about the piece. I think it's great. I, of course, I never was really affected by autism, and I didn't know many people. I don't know how I kind of skated past that. But once I saw the play and I knew what it meant to Joe, I thought, well, let me let me bring it to Joe and uh, see what he thinks. And he loved it, and it's just great. It's, I think it's very important that we're doing it. So, so yesterday was the uh, the opening night. For yes. Us. And, and how did it go? It went great. It was a full house. Ed Asner was here, uh, and he he has autism in his family, and uh, there wasn't an empty seat. We had a blast. It was a beautiful show. It's. You laugh, you cry, and fall in love. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful production. So now, autism is very interesting um, disease because it typically affects males. Is that correct? That's typically male. that's true. It's more typical. It, 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 like you know, my daughter would be considered, you know, more in the percentage. That's you know, it's lower percentage of, of, of girls get it. But yeah, that's true. But they still don't really have a handle on it, or you know, they're mm -hmm. still. You know, my daughter's thirty-two years old, and so when she was first diagnosed. It, there really was a lot going on. There much information about it. It was almost like one in maybe 16, 1800 births. Now it's become, it's almost epidemic in a way. Yes, I mean, right. when you consider how, and how many births, it's, it's it, it, there was a time it was within one, one in every 150 there were children born on that spectrum. Is it because so, the spectrum varies so much that they, like? Partly that, partly, and partly because a lot of, just due to the scientific breakthroughs, I think part of it is a lot of these children are, are living are, are actually, my daughter was born at one pound 13 ounces. Mm. So if she'd have been born maybe 20 years earlier, she wouldn't have even survived, probably. But the fact that she did, maybe the autism was somewhat related to that. You know, there's some indication of children born that premature is a higher tendency to get it. So there's, there's a lot of different reasons, perhaps, why it, it's more um, rampant now. 
But we have to, the thing is we have to deal with it. The world has to deal with it. It's not just a, a United States problem. It's a world issue. And these, these children grow up to be adults. And what's going to happen to them? So, so now for the audience back home, a lot of them are, are never heard of what autism is. Um, so tell us a little bit about what is autism so that people can kind of be more educated so that when they're watching a the play or when they're um, coming to the play, they can understand more um, the cause. Joe's way more qualified. Well, it's, 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 it's a tough answer really because it, it, it is, the spectrum is wide. I mean, it goes from, you know, there are, there are aspects of autism where you would say, you think, well, oh, that guy's a little quirky. I mean, we all had like a quirky teacher in school who was very brilliant. They, they, very, they, they very well could have been on the autism spectrum. People have said that perhaps, like Einstein may have been on the autism spectrum, because some of them have these savant abilities where they're brilliant, but because, they, because they, they've been able to channel that, that part of their brain for kind of brilliant kind of things, and, and, and they're less impacted on the other things. Well, on the other end of the spectrum, we have children who are, literally have to wear helmets because they're banging their head against the wall. And so it's, it's a disorder of, it's a communication disorder. Like my, my daughter, she's brilliant with some things, but in other things, almost like English is, is like a second language to her. And that first language is, is like a, almost like a mixture of a lot of different But she's brilliant with dates. Oh yeah, my goodness. That's what I mean. you, you say them, anything there, she knows the date. Yeah. When it happened, it's amazing. Yeah, some, wow. some of them artistic ability. They can, they're, 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 they've shown where a kid could fly over in a helicopter, look down and look at the landscape, land, they take a pencil and instantly draw exact replica of that, like, like, like as if it was a wow. photograph. So it's sort of like it's like an imbalance, like it's, 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 too far to the left or right or yeah, something. Yeah, it's a but disorder it's of the brain, but they don't really, you know, they still don't know. They're getting closer. I mean, someday I'm sure it'll be like, you know, Star Trek where they get you <laughs> and it, it screws that one chromosome straight and everything's fine. Correct. Wow. Until then, it's, it's still, um, and that's what we need to have an awareness and why we need to still do the research to try to... And we're doing the play so we could raise money uh, via Ed Asner Family Center, as well as Autism Works Now. They're, they're both benefiting from the play, and that's where we're really encouraging people to see that the show's important and theater has the power to do that. But in addition to that, every dollar in, we're actually helping yeah. continue the and research. If you don't know what autism is, this is a good way to find out. That's, so, that's words, cause you're really a real snapshot of that. That's pretty awesome. Now I want to ask both of you a question, but um, before they, what is the uh, what was the inspiration behind the title? I have no idea um, because I, you know I didn't write the play. Well, let's I put just, that as a term. Self injurious behavior is something that, that, in other words, it's one of those last things you want to hear when you have a child with autism, because in other words, as I said, it's a wide spectrum. It could be just that the kid's a little quirky and, and it's very mild. But if you're talking about self injurious behavior, that means that that particular child or person has a tendency to actually hurt themselves. Right. In other words, they may scratch at themselves or pound their There's a lot of biting wall, too, right? Or biting. That goes on with autism. It, it can, it can. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm saying, so if you hear the term self-injurious behavior in the autism field or the world, you have to, it kind of makes you go, oh, that person has a little heavier load to carry if yeah. that's what they're dealing with. What they're trying to you mean the parents, the, the parents and the family? The parents and family, yeah. 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 So, so what's your role in the um, in the play? Who do you play? I, I'm not I'm not acting in the play. I, I'm just I'm one of the executive producers, Joe and I. And basically, my role was I saw it in New York. I thought it was very valuable, and I loved it, and wanted to bring it here to Los Angeles. So my role was helping bring the show here to Los yeah, Angeles. Put some attention on it. To present it to the show. This, look, look at this, and hopefully allows them then to take it on from there to. We certainly took the great place. Well, thank you. 68 North Hollywood. Yeah, right. That's a perfect right, place right, to right. do it. Well, I appreciate that. Um, and, and it's so much going on. And it's running from, uh, is it September to 9th, all the way to 26th? 28th. 28th. Yeah, we're running right. to 28th. So that's a, that's a long time. Well, in the theater world, it's a nice run. I think about five weeks, whatever that math is. But uh, but certainly it goes fast. So if you're into it, come see it. And it's not, I have to say, it's not a big downer. Of course, it'll break your heart. There's a lot of laughs. It's a beautiful yeah, production. No, it's, 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 a, it's what I think is a great night in theater because you really have the experience of going on a full ride, you know? Right. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. Well, I'm standing to see it. Right. Oh, good. Well, well thank right. you. We have a seat for you. We're ready. So anybody from Chicago or Brooklyn is all right with me. There you go. Right. 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 What you feel? Especially a Cubs fan. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah, you're telling me. Or, or a Yankee fan. Let's get it. Yeah. Like <laughs> no, no, I know. Joe has a little crush on the Yankees. Lee Mazzilli is one of my best friends. So. Lee Mazzilli. I love that. Uh, you know the funniest thing is that, and uh, Joe can relate to this, um, 
the Cubs used to always, they were digressing fans, don't be upset, those who are Yankee fans or Mets fans, or even you know, Tango fans, don't, don't be upset. But, but the thing is that, um, you know, the Cubs used to always, the reason why everybody loves the Cubs around the world is because they came on Channel 9, right? And Channel 9 was the only um, station. Super station. Exactly. So if you didn't even like the Cubs, no matter where you were in the uh, country, you could watch the Cubs. The only game, game in Cubs. <laughs> so, so people actually became Cubs fans, they became the lovable losers because you can watch them all over the world. Now, but the interesting thing about it is that the only place you will not see Cubs jerseys is in Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium is so di they're so diehard, you might get in a fight. And we have, <laughs> enough, we have enough jerseys uh, in that stadium, we don't have room for anybody else. <laughs> We have a 27 World Series, so we're doing okay. Okay, okay. We win about one every four years, is the man. Yeah, we win every one every hundred. Days. Yeah, so, so we're happy. <laughs> Bush County. But, but however, however, Ron, I'll let you know that um, that was the greatest moment in sports history in 2016 when the Cubs won World Series. Yeah, in, in, in sports history. So, I have to be honest, I got behind it. Was I was very excited. That was Especially awesome. for Joe, I was so that was, happy. That was, that was pretty awesome. Now, um, we were talking off camera. Now, let's talk about this right here. Can we get a shot of this? All right, now, um, Ron, tell me a little bit more about the uh, Ed, uh, Ed Asner Family Center um, and what this is all about. Yeah, the, the Ed Asner Family Center, as I said, you know, their family has been affected by autism. And they created an environment where they have classes, fitness, dance, music. I mean, you see it all right here. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty much on the nose. And basically, the way Matt explained it uh, to me, Matt Asner, Ed's son, is they created a place where they wish their child can go to. Yeah, another, it's a family center. In other words, we wish our kid had all of these options until so we created to make sure they do and others. Right, Joe? Right. So, so now, for those who are watching the show and they want to donate, but they can't make it tonight, where would they be able to donate? We have a, uh, um, a uh, uh, it's not Indiegogo, what's it called? Crowdfunding. Go, go, go fund me. Go, go fund There's me. a GoFundMe page, which mm -hmm. is very important, and every penny is going towards the autism and the production. Um, I think the best way to do it is find self injurious behavior on Facebook, and you'll find the link uh, to it. Uh, there's another way to search it. I don't. I don't recall exactly what it is now, but you'll find it really easy if you want to. And uh, every dollar truly does help. It's a big deal. So we appreciate that. We're talking to some two big rock stars. These gentlemen are big in the industry. Um, I can. You can tell, and just look at their faces. They've been around for a long time, but making uh, great movies as well as uh, TV shows. When we come back from this very, very short uh, commercial break, we're going to be talking to Joe um, as well as Ron about their careers and two of their favorite, two of my favorite movies they were in that they don't even know about. I'm Sherrod. We'll be right back. Right after this. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrod Show. I am your host, Sherrod, live on location at Theater 68 for our, our the second day of self-injurious behavior. Um, last night was a success, a runaway success. Um, if you want to donate, this, you can always pull up self-injurious behavior on Facebook um, if you want to donate. If you can't make it out tonight, showtime tonight is at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, right? yes. So you come out to 8 o'clock and you can be able to have a wonderful time um, and also be on an emotional roller coaster where you want to laugh, smile, and really, really feel something. You know, it's been a long time since I really felt something when I went to a play, so I'm looking forward to it tonight. Okay. Now, we, um, in my last segment, I was speaking about um, let's, uh, the, these gentlemen, these celebrities who've been around for a long time doing great films. Uh, Joe actually was in um, Godfather 3, um, if you don't remember seeing him. Joe, what was the character you played in Godfather 3? I was the bad guy. I was Joey Zaza. I that was the, uh, you know, the thorn in the side of the Corleone family. <laughs> I paid for it. Uh, well, well, I got whacked, right? I got whacked, sure. I got whacked a lot. Who whacked you? I forgot. Andy Garcia. Yeah, yeah. It's from horseback. Joey. Boom, boom, boom. Sasa. Actually, what was funny is we're very good, your friends. I mean, we live about six blocks from each other for the last 30 years. You say, you remember when I whacked you? Well, what's funny is we'll go, sometimes we'll go to Laker games together because he's got season tickets. We'll walk through, we'll walk through the, you know, Staples Center, wherever it is, and people will go, oh, 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 like like with Rashan, like with Triple H used to, um, you know, uh, uh, he would turn around and beat up um, the Undertaker. They'd be like, wait a minute, what are they doing? Friends eating dinner, exactly, you right. know, but they're enemies. And then you, gentlemen, uh, Ron, you were in the Bronx Tale among many of the other movies um, as well. And what was that like? You said that was your first job. Yeah, it was my first job, and I had a small thing, but I was very grateful for it. I uh, I basically answered an ad. It was before I was an actor, and I went down there, and uh, and De Niro picked me out of the crowd. 
and uh, and had me sit up and they gave me some lines. They ended up getting cut, but I uh, I'm there and uh, and I got my SAG card between that and 902 and 0. But it was my very first job, and I fell in love with it. And I got to have lunch with De Niro and. Uh, what was, was that like? It was. He was very kind to me. You know, he was. Uh, he was great. And Grace Hightower. We had the three of us at lunch. It was really right. bizarre. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I just was. Uh, let's just say I got bit with the bug. I knew after that. I was like, oh, I, I, I love this. I want to do it. So. Now, how old were you then? Well, then we're gonna start doing math here. So, <laughs> you, know, saying, you never, you never ask a guy how old he is, right, Joe? So, uh, the ladies. I, I will. Bye, man. Uh, I don't know. I was in my early twenties. Really? And, uh, yeah. And so I, I, I loved it, and I fell in love with uh, filmmaking. And, it was just awesome. It turned out to be a beautiful film. And I have a lot of dear friends who were on that film, and we're still friends today. So. Now, now, you're also going to be doing something, uh, you're going to be collaborating, doing something pretty big in Chicago coming up in October, is that right? Yeah, that's the hope. We're, uh, we're yeah. very close to locking that in. Well, Ronnie wrote a play, wrote a play called I'm Not a Comedian, I'm Letting Bruce, which is basically the story of Letting Bruce. Now, this is this is really cool because he gave you this. Now, look at that. Yeah, that's that's an interesting that. poster. Now, um, I want to ask him about that. I'm not a comedian. Well, Lenny Bruce, the real Lenny Bruce, was actually arrested in Chicago back in 1962 when he was a stand-up comic. Do you know that was his first arrest? Yeah, so. and that's what the play's about. He was, he, he was, I mean, people who aren't familiar with Lenny Bruce is, just look him up, you just Google and you'll find out. But, he, but he's the reason you had, you know, Richard Pryor and George Carlin and all these comics, Eddie Murphy, who followed him, who were able to do the material that they do. Because he paved the way. He was, he was, he was push, pushing the envelope of the of freedom of speech back then. But back then, they were just, you know, they were busting. Every time he would say a four-letter word in his routine or whatever, he'd, you know, cops would be there and be dragged to jail. So it's quite an interesting story, and we've got a tremendous run here in Los Angeles. Yeah, 118 in LA and 100 in New York, so 218 yeah. I've done. So we've already run you know, over 100 performances in LA, over 100 performances in New York, and now next we're going to Chicago. It's a one-man show. I think Ronnie's just uh, tremendous. I, I directed it, but he wrote it, and he's the star. And uh, uh, you know, it's been so a hell of a good time. Yeah. Now, now um, what's his theory behind? I'm not a comedian. I'm Lenny Bruce. So, what is he, what is his theory behind? Well, that was the point. I mean, he, he was so much more than a comic. I think the reason they really hated this guy because he was so smart. I mean, it wasn't about the curse words. That was the excuse they ended up using. It's almost like what, like yeah. the great comics have done. You know, the Dick Gregory. His son was a huge fan of, of the play. Yeah, he was great. He sure. got great quotes from like Billy Crystal, from uh, uh, Patty LaPone. Patty LaPone. Robert Townsend, the great comic. Yeah. He came and so it's like, it's like, it's also holding a mirror up to society in a way, too. It's not just telling jokes. It's like giving back the layers and kind of, it's like exposing a wound, too. It's like, Ripping off a bandage and saying, "I see this." this back then, it was quite risky, right? His, his risky. style. He was like, the guy who paved the way. It was more than quite risky. Now it's kind of like you know they just did a, a piece on. Did you see the David Chappelle uh, Netflix, <laughs> Netflix special? Yes. Well, it, what, they wrote a beautiful piece in the Chicago Tribune, which I sent to Joe today. Yeah. And basically, they were saying in the headline, it said something like Chappelle. I'm paraphrasing, but something like. He's doing the kind of comedy that Lenny Bruce was getting arrested for. Yeah, right? that, was the title. that was the headline of the piece, yeah. and I found it really interesting and kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, I just kind of like serendipitous, you know, that we're going to head out to it's Chicago. It's very apropos now, too, I mean, yeah. because the freedom of speech is something that's being kind of threatened in many ways. Right? And you really mean, threatened. And you can't help but admire people like that who are really pioneers and trailblazers that oh, got yeah. out there and risk it all. To pay the way for it. Absolutely. Well, he used to say on stage sometimes, he would say, you know, I'm sorry I wasn't funny tonight. I'm not a comedian. I'm Lenny Bruce. And that's where I got the title. Because there were nights he wasn't funny, and that was okay with him because he had a very funny mind, but he was so smart. And so, you know, he, like Joe said, he held a mirror up to society, and people had to deal with that, and a lot of people didn't want to deal with that. He also had a tragic life. I mean, he died, you know, drug overdose. 40, you know. He's only 40 years old? Yeah. Wow. So, uh, but, it's, but the play, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I'm so yeah, looking forward to it. That's going to be huge. In Chicago. How many dates are you going to do in Chicago? Well, uh, I think we're minimally going to start at like a six week run. Uh, so do about 30, up to about five performances a week. Uh, it's a really taxing play, so five, more than five stuff. Um, and that's where we're going to start. We'll go through uh, hopefully early December and then people keep coming, we'll keep doing it, you know? Now, um, so you being Lenny Bruce and you're doing a uh, one-man show, has that, that's been a, that's a tough thing to do. I've interviewed a lot of people who've done one-man show. As a matter of fact, this guy here is a comedian behind my cameraman. Nice. He's a very, very funny guy, Mr. Mark Walker, um, as well. So you know who Lenny was, right, Mark? Okay, shaking yeah, his head. All right, all right. So, so he's pretty awesome. So uh, What's he gonna say, he doesn't know? No, he doesn't know. Mark knows, I can see him. So doing a one-man show as, as, um, as Lenny, that's pretty tough. 
It is, it's, it's the hardest and easiest thing I've ever done. And what I mean is like, it's the hardest thing for obvious reasons. It's a 90 minute monologue. We go on a, an incredible emotional journey, funny, it's heartbreaking, but it's the easiest in meaning all I have to do is just get out of the way. And then it just is there. So it's, it's a really, the nights it's hard, it's because I'm somehow not completely able to give myself over. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Yeah, but it's really, it's a tour de force. It really, I mean, it's, he, he, after 200 performances, he's really taken ownership of that role. And that was, he's as close as you're going to get to, I think, seeing, you know, bringing back Lenny. You know, That's Lenny. pretty awesome. And it's fun. And Lenny's daughter, Kitty Bruce, this is the one time she's embraced somebody playing her father. And there was a great, not a great, it was a movie that was done with uh, Dustin Hoffman years ago. Fosse, yeah. Based on the play, Lenny, which was a good play. I, was, I even did a production of the play back in the 70s. But Kit, Kitty has embraced this particular show you know, way more than she did the movie. Which we, we, you know, we feel really great about it. It's a testament. To, to me, that's the big reason. Hopefully, we're so, doing something. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're seeing it because most of the times families don't agree as a remake. Is that no? Is that the family that approve of it? You must be pretty doggone good. Well, I well, we, it. well, we will be in Chicago, ladies and gentlemen, around October 28th. Is that correct? Uh, 26. I think we're to open, but you're gonna come, right? Yes. You're coming to Chicago. Well, that's hometown. And, uh, and and by that time, the Cubs should have been celebrating their World Series. Yeah, just about, you know, like one game from the World Series. I'm not Series. opening 20 years from now, Joe. I'm opening this year. One game from the World Series. Hopefully they're playing the Yankees. Exactly. Oh, that'd Wouldn't that be something? Oh, oh that'd be the story. You can get tickets, right? You got polo? Yeah, that'd, that'd be pretty, pretty awesome. awesome. You feel like <laughs> well, 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 gentlemen, for the sake of time, I got one more question for yeah. you. I might know that you're pretty busy, and I'm so honored to have you both on the show. Thank you. May my weekend. I got up. To say I gotta I gotta come out and meet Joe, I gotta meet Ryan. And I right. unfortunately weren't able to meet Ed, but hopefully I'll be able to see him tonight yes. as well. He's a living legend as well. But one last question, I'll kind of fire it out to you. Um, of all the movies and films you've ever done, yeah. which one was your favorite? That's a tough one. I don't I really couldn't pick one. I could maybe I could maybe, you know, get in a ballpark of five or six that that, that are very memorable. But I, I, there's no one. I feel blessed that I'm in a that, that I make a living doing what I wanted to do since I was 16 years old. You know what I mean? And I think that if somebody can say that. There's that saying that says, if you, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. So I, I feel that I've, that's been kind of my thing. So in other words, I've enjoyed it even when I was doing plays in high school, as much as I do like doing Criminal Minds for 15 years, you know? So to, 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 to say, oh, well, this was the best, or this was the one thing, it's, it's very difficult. Everyone has a story, every little thing has an exquisite part of an experience. You know, I've shot all over the world, I've done stuff in Australia and in Europe and Canada and all over the United States. It's been a, I've been very blessed that way. Nice so I, luckily, I've, I've, you know, to, to me it's more than just the job, it's the career that counts. And, and I've been doing it for 50 years and so I just feel very lucky that I've been able to do that. Well, you know, just keep making the great stuff. I hope so. We're, we're you're still captivating Your lips to God's ears. I'm telling you, you're just captivating us and we're just going You got a right shot in show business. I got a shot. I, got I mean, he's new, he's shaking. It's too late to turn back, shot. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and what about you, guys? Um, I, I don't want to give the same answer as Joe because that would be canned, but but there's truth in what he said. For me, I guess if I have to pick one, it's going to be the film that I wrote called West of Brooklyn. I wasn't half the actor I am now. I didn't know how to make a film. That's where I learned. And But the, if the real reason for the actors who were watching was because be, prior to that movie, I really perpetuated the Italian stereotype and I, and I didn't have the confidence to try to play like a leading guy. I always like sold out with myself to play like the cousin or the goofy friend. It was that movie that made me feel like in a non-traditional way, like a, like a Cagney or a Bogart, that I could do, I could play the guy that the thing's about. You know, and I know that sounds a little crazy, but that, that I turned a corner with that film because I proved to myself that, hey, I could do that. I could be with those guys. Again, I, I'm proud of the performance. I look at it now, I cringe, but, but uh, I'm a different actor now, but that was the thing that kind of gave me permission to move forward with no excuses. Can we watch? Can we see that film on Netflix? Or yeah, Netflix? Uh, not Netflix, but you can get it probably for fifty cents at this point on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Rest of Brooklyn. Joe's in it. Joe made a cameo. Joe made a nice movie. Really? Yeah, I wrote Joe a letter. We shot this about fifteen years ago, and I, I wrote Joe a letter to a PO box. That's how I met him. and said, "I've got everybody cast except I got to have Joe Montaigne do this one role." And he, he called me right away, read it, and, and he did it. And so that's a good. That's a good dude. That's yeah. A good oh, he's, he's really cool. 
Yeah, you know, I've interviewed a lot, a lot of different celebrities and stars, but you guys, I can talk to you all night. Just like we're sitting in Upper East Side in New York just talking. Watch Tell what you wish for, this may happen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're always looking for friends, pal. Be yeah. careful. I appreciate that, man, so much. Thank you My so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Show. You're I awesome. I really appreciate Thank you. You are just, and I can see you in Chicago. We'll see you right. in yes. Yes. We're yes. We're holding you together. Yeah. I, I will be there. And I want to thank you all um, so much for being a part of this uh, interview this evening on the Gerard Show Live in Theater 68. Having, having a wonderful time. But the night is not over. As I said, we are going to stay for the play so we can be able to really enjoy ourselves on the night out. And you will see my review uh, come on Tuesday. So definitely check it out at WCOBM.TV for the full interview as well as the review for our uh, play tonight, Self-Injurious Behavior. You don't want to miss that. And also on Oct in October, when I am in Chicago for Many Brews. I can't wait. Come on. Can't wait to see them and be there as well. And then also stay tuned for the Sherrard Show on our next episode, where we're going to have Mrs. Cardi B stopping by the show. And in, in the meantime, see you all next week. I'm Sherrard. Have a great weekend and be safe. We'll see you next time.